who knew a movie about an early 20th century British poet would have so much drama? Let's talk the laureate. start from watcher pass i'm going to talk to you about the laureate which is coming to theaters and on demand on january 21st 2022 uh if you looked at the image you might have seen me with a book it's actually a uh, emily dickinson book it's the only book of poetry i have the laureate tells the story of robert graves who was a renowned british poet and writer who had some amazing uh works but also had a lot of drama in his life and this movie kind of chronicles that uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the movies, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then talk a little about the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers. If you don't want to know what happens, if you want to go experience this yourself, check it out on theaters and on demand when it comes out on January 21st. But if you want to know what happens, and this is based on a true story, so I, you know, some of this information is out there, uh, then let's keep going. So Laurie tells the story of Robert Graves and his wife, Nancy, who have kind of your normal English life. They have a good apartment. They are both kind of well-renowned. She is a, a painter. He is a writer. They're doing well, except Robert has some issues. They appear to stem from his time in the war. He has a lot of PTSD over that. Uh, and also they, they're having some relationship issues. On top of this, they decided to bring an American poet named Laura Riding to come live with them and help, uh, help Robert with some work and also help tutor their daughter in in writing and english and other topics and you would think this is, this would be the perfect situation except laura is kind of a very different person than anyone in british society and she is kind of instantly drawn to robert and robert is instantly drawn to her and so as you can imagine that leads to some drama but not the kind of drama that i think you would expect uh given the the way the story is set up and it's kind of a very surprising overall tale and i can't believe it's based on a true story but they say it is so i guess it is um so things i liked about this movie the first is the setting this movie is set in like uh like 1900s britain and it looks like it it has really wonderful kind of old british manners they've got really great kind of costumes like the film feels like you are traveling back in time like, I don't know, maybe like you're going to Downton Abbey, except this has even more drama than that. And I really liked it. It really kind of helped you focus on the story because it feels like it was set in that time period. So there's nothing that distracted you about the story. The second thing I really loved is the drama. I mean, this story has a lot of drama and it's, it, it, there is a lot there. It's a very slow buildup, which I really liked. You, you have a growing sense of unease that maybe this relationship is going to go in different directions. And it takes a lot of time to establish uh, both Robert and Nancy's characters, their kind of family, and also their interaction with Laura Riding as she comes into their life and kind of how she inserts herself into their family business, which I thought was a was a very good, slow, enjoyable buildup. And then it eventually goes off the deep end. I'll talk about that later. But uh, overall, I really liked all the drama. And there's a lot of drama, as you can imagine, when you've got different people entering each other's lives, especially at this time period. It manages to ratchet up both gossip and kind of the emotions between these characters. And the last thing I really liked is the cast. I mean, eventually you get kind of a core cast of Tom Hughes as Robert, Diana Agron as Laura, Laura Haddock as Nancy, and Fra Fey as Jeffrey. And they are all really fun together. They, uh, they, they play off each other. They do a really good job of kind of embodying these characters and each bringing different things to the relationship. I mean, Robert is kind of the, I don't know, the, the focal point. He's a very talented writer. He's a little brooding. Uh, Diana is a lot more free-spirited and a lot more willing to kind of push the limits. And she's also a brilliant writer, but uh, she's always a little bit in the shadow of Robert, even though I think, you know, she is a great writer in her own mind, in her own right. You have Nancy, who's a little bit more reserved, um, but also kind of a, an artist and like lover of life. And you have Joffrey, who is just this kind of like lovable young kid that who comes to try to learn from Laura writing and kind of have her help with his poetry and she he gets kind of drawn into this intrigue as well kind of through the gravitational pull of lore writing and, and this kind of crazy situation that they're all in so things i didn't like and i kind of mentioned a couple of these already the first is the the ptsd aspect you know I, it felt like it was a very important part of robert's work it felt like it was a very important part of robert's writing i don't think it was handled that well i felt like i needed a little bit more background it, it feels like it kind of flashed in and out you had little glimpses of what might have happened during the war maybe, maybe robert didn't talk about it and that's why but i felt like i didn't get enough information to really understand what the ptsd was and that then caused me to not really connect with that part of robert's persona and so it felt like it was just almost a distraction that came up occasionally and detracted from the drama now it does kind of come full circle towards the ending there is a little bit of a ptsd part at the very end but 
overall, I didn't really kind of get a good sense of it. And I thought it just felt like it was a distraction throughout the movie. And the last thing I didn't really love, and I mentioned this already, is there's a downward spiral kind of toward uh, in about two thirds of the way in the movie. It has a really fantastic build, a very slow, very deliberate, very kind of um, dramatic of a, of a build up. And then at some point when the, the main relationship kind of shatters, it goes off the deep end. Robert and Laura, Laura kind of go off and live this like free spirited partying lifestyle that just feels like a very big break from the world that you knew just a few minutes before. And I, I think there was a, a temporal aspect and maybe there was also kind of a, uh, a geographical aspect. I think maybe they were in America at that point. So that's part of why they were able to do this. But it did feel like it was just a very quick drop. I would have liked to see a little bit more in how this built up. Now, maybe maybe that was not very interesting. Maybe they, they wanted to move the story along. The movie already was a, a good length. So maybe they didn't want to do that. But it did feel like all of a sudden you've got this kind of like slow paced, but more modern relationship that is having some issues. And then all of a sudden you're like crazy Wolf of Wall Street party scenes. And so I wanted something in between. That's okay. I still really enjoyed the movie. I still really liked it. I thought it was very kind of fresh and original and also surprising that this was based on a true story. So a very brief kind of synopsis of the ending because I really actually did like the ending too. I thought that the ending was very well done, especially kind of the end scenes. I thought that those really brought the movie home and, and tied it all together. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, Laura is instantly kind of attracted to Robert and wants to kind of like get into this family situation, but she also is drawn to Nancy. Now, I'm not sure if that is a, a legitimate interest or just a way to kind of wedge herself in, but eventually Laura and Robert go on a trip to uh, some, uh, maybe London, I don't remember exactly where, but somewhere far from their kind of cottage life. So during this trip, they get stranded. And while they're there, they finally kind of let their emotions go, I guess. They finally hook up. Uh, in this hotel room because they got stranded due to the weather. When they get back, Robert is visibly upset because he betrayed his marriage, obviously. And so he's very kind of standoffish with Nancy. And then it becomes pretty clear that Nancy was actually okay with this. I think she says that that she was uh, that she was okay with this and that she kind of helped plan this because she thought it would be good for Robert. And so now they enter into this kind of uh, threesome family relationship where it is Robert, Nancy, and Laura. And they actually do a pretty good job, it seems like, at, at least for the initial part, of managing this unconventional relationship in a, at a time when this kind of thing would not have been socially acceptable. Uh, it, it's, an in, it's interesting to see kind of how happy they are when they're all three together. But eventually, Robert's kind of obsession with Laura grows. I think his preference for Laura grows. And it starts to drive a wedge in the marriage. And so eventually, Robert chooses Laura, and they go off, I think, to New York to kind of start their own publishing company. And that's when the film goes off the deep end. Like I said... It goes pretty crazy pretty quickly. And I think that is to show both the contrast and also just how far Robert's obsession with Laura has become. He kind of becomes a completely different person. Uh, and they start this publishing company that wants to break the rules and wants to be very unconventional. And their publishing company does very well. This, this situation is where they meet Jeffrey. He comes to learn from Laura. However, Robert's books become very successful and he becomes a very well-known author. There's some scenes where he's kind of like negotiating with what he wants to write next. And he's trying to branch out to new areas and like, well, if you write this story, like it'll be an instant bestseller. So everyone kind of knows who Robert Graves is. Uh, but his relationship with Laura is kind of in this weird kind of power struggle with Jeffrey. Like Laura uh, takes Jeffrey into their relationship. And so now Robert is kind of jealous of Jeffrey and trying to always be, you know, Laura's preference. And this kind of causes some tension and drama in their relationship, as you would imagine. Uh, eventually, Nancy comes to visit them, and when she's there, I think she you, she can tell that Robert is kind of completely off the deep end and obsessed with Laura. And so, while she while she's there, I think he like leaves her in the room and tells her to rest. And then he like goes up and like parties with with them. And it, it's a very kind of sad scene because he basically just abandons her here. And so Nancy eventually moves out. She gets like a houseboat nearby so that she can raise the daughter their daughter Catherine nearby at least and she can then Catherine can have some time with her father even though her father's kind of gone off the deep end and eventually Jeffrey goes and visits Laura it's, it's unclear why maybe he's being nice maybe he you know feels bad that she left or maybe he is interested in her as well I mean she's a talented painter and he you know is a, is a writer so maybe he kind of recognizes that artistic endeavor or maybe he just needs a friend like the the, the relationship with Robert and uh, Laura is fairly toxic because it is kind of always a power struggle. So maybe he just needed someone who was not part of that power struggle. So he goes and and talks to Nancy, and they build up a friendship there. They, you know, he's he's 
Jeffrey is very sweet. He is very good with Catherine, the, the Robert and Nancy's daughter. And he's a, he's allowed to kind of like be free and express himself in the confines of this houseboat. And he really kind of opens up to Nancy. And so eventually Jeffrey confronts Laura and Robert. And it's this really dramatic scene where it's Nancy, Laura, Robert, and Jeffrey all in the room. And Jeffrey tries to kind of vent his feelings and tell Laura he wants to leave. And Robert kind of always wanting to, uh, I don't know, I guess he wants to like make Laura happy. He knows that that Laura likes Jeffrey. He kind of berates Jeffrey for wanting to leave and kind of turning aside like the the help that Laura's given her. So like she kind of plucked him out of obscurity and turned him into a, you know, uh, at least a, a recognized poet. Uh, but eventually Jeffrey and Robert start fighting because, you know, Jeffrey is upset because he sees what Laura's kind of pull has done to Robert and what it's done to Nancy. And so he tries to like tell Robert, like, she's not good for you. Like she is playing this game and, you know, she's, she's trying to possess you and possess me as well. Uh, and they eventually start fighting. And this is a really fantastic scene. Like I said, they, there's really good kind of, act, uh, there's really good drama. There's a lot of anger. There's some really good music as well that kind of fills this scene. I, I really love this. This was kind of like the highlight of the movie for me is this specific kind of confrontation scene. And while Robert and Jeffrey are, are fighting, they start arguing, uh, they start to kind of like actually tussle and, you know, Nancy goes up to try to break them up, I believe. And during this, Laura, for some reason, just throws herself out the window. I don't exactly know why. I think maybe she wanted to be the center of attention again. Like by doing this, she thought that they, that they were all going to kind of like flock to her. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe she doesn't know either. But when this happens, you know, Robert runs to the window and sees that she's fallen out. You don't actually see what this part, but she kind of looks down the window, sees her, and then the camera pans away and Robert jumps out too. So, you know, he thinks that Laura's committed suicide. He commits suicide as well. He hits the pavement. And you see, kind of see them both on the pavement looking at each other, not moving. But they survive. Uh, Laura is a little worse for wear than Robert. Robert survives with some minor injuries, surprisingly. Laura has like a, I think a compressed spine. So she, and some, some bad bruising. So she can't walk. She is, I think she eventually would recover, but she just had much worse injuries and is a little bit more of a broken character after this. So after this, Jeffrey goes to see Nancy. And I think he says essentially like, I was going to go back to Ireland, but I want to stay. I want to stay with you and, and to help raise Catherine, uh, Robert, and Nancy's daughter. It's very sweet. So finally, Nancy accepts Jeffrey and accepts his love. And it's a very beautiful kind of happy scene between them. So Nancy goes to tell Robert that she's leaving. She's leaving this kind of situation. She's taking Catherine and Jeffrey with her. And she's going back to their home, which I think is World's End, which I definitely have to visit because of the World's End movie. This movie had less drinking, but the same amount of craziness. So Robert, at this point, is crazily moody i think you know he's he feels a little broken he's worried about laura he's kind of brooding over his kind of crumbling world around him and so laura you know tells him tries to kind of encourage him and then has this really great line at the end uh where as she's leaving she, she tells him yeah you're a great writer with or without laura writing and then the movie kind of shows a battlefield this is where the ptsd comes back and you've got laura and robert on one side of this battle and you've got uh, Jeffrey and Nancy and I think their parents uh, on the other side. And this kind of shows, you know, the, 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 the conflict that had happened and kind of the, the two sides at this point. Like Robert has completely alienated that family from him. And during this scene, there's uh, some nice voiceover that kind of shows, I don't know, like the, the cost of this greatness. Like basically... Laura did help Robert a lot. Like she made him a better writer. She made him kind of more creative. She made him embrace new ideas. And so the voiceover basically says like that, that Laura made Robert a better writer uh, and it was made him more precise and helped with his demons. Like she actually also helped with his PTSD demons, helping him kind of deal with that. But at what cost? And so you see kind of the cost is now Robert is this great writer, well-respected, but kind of a broken man at this point. Like, I don't know, the movie doesn't show what happened after this, but at this point he is fairly broken, but also a brilliant writer and well-respected. So I think the, you know, I guess the underlying moral of the story is kind of the cost of greatness 
uh, what uh, you would do to kind of achieve that and kind of the sacrifices you would have to make. And I thought it was a, an interesting way to tie it up. I thought it was a really good movie. And so that's The Laureate. It comes out January 21st, 2021 It on in theaters and on demand. It's a really great cast. It's a really interesting story. And it's based on a true story. So you've got a little bit of a historical perspective from there as well. So thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. And please check out my other content. I've got other movie reviews, interviews, unboxing videos, and weekly movie recommendations. Thank you. Thank you.